Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Wen Qifan uh, from the Hong Kong Pony University. Uh, welcome to join our tutorial. Here, uh, I will co-present uh, this tutorial uh, with Xiang Yuzhao, Ye Jing Wang. They are from the City University of Hong Kong. And Hui Feng Guo, Huo Chen, and Yue Ming Tang, and they are all from uh, NOAA's uh, app map. And today uh, we will talk about the automatic machine learning for recommendations, fundamentals and advanced. And you can uh, get more details about uh, our tutorial in this website and as well as our uh, recent uh, research uh, survey paper. Uh, so let's get started. Okay, so first, uh, what are recommend systems? Uh, recommender systems are information filtering systems and aims to adjust the information over no problem. Uh, they try to filter some items and suggest relevant items to users based on their unique needs and preferences. Here, uh, this item can be any products, uh, people, and news, uh, movies, etc. Actually, um, the recommender systems are everywhere in our online world, especially at many user-based online servers, like the e-commerce uh, and the social media, etc. So uh, when you open a website and you type the URL link to the website, uh, you can uh, see uh, recommender systems there. And no matter you use your cell phone or your PC or your laptop, so when you uh, browse into search websites, uh, you can see uh, some recommended items. So uh, let me give you some examples. So the first example is from e-commerce, such as the Amazon and eBay. Of course, uh, we have the Taobao and GD.com in China. Here is an example at, on Amazon. This is uh, the most frequent uh, recommendation scenario. I believe a lot of you know it. So uh, when you want to buy a product like a book, uh, the system would recommend a package, book uh, A, B, and C to be frequently purchased together. Another example is from the content uh, sharing website, especially like the new and the video sharing uh, websites like the YouTube or the TikTok. Again, uh, when you enter into this ref service, you can get uh, their information there. Uh, sometimes uh, on the first page, you can see uh, these uh, recommended uh, videos or uh, something news, right? Another example uh, you are interested in, uh, we are also can recommend people in our online world, right? Like, uh, like in, in this kind of this uh, social uh, networking or these uh, social medias, such as the Facebook and LinkedIn. In China, we have the Weibo. Uh, typically, uh, for these websites, uh, you will uh, get something like friends or uh, they will uh, show to you and they will recommend you, uh, uh, you some potential friends you want to connect. Uh, okay, so here uh, I want to go through an example to show uh, what a typical setting in recommender system. So here, this example is from the movie recommendations. Uh, we have amps items, that is the movie, right? We have end users. Users can rate uh, their movies in to indicate their preferences in each movie. Uh, for example, here uh, we run we may uh, want to use a one to five rating star uh, system where a one represent I hate it, probably three is neutral and five as I love it, right? Of course, in other websites, uh, probably we don't have uh, this kind of rating information, but we have other interactions between the users and items. Uh, for example, in YouTube, probably we can uh, connect uh, these uh, videos and we will comment on these uh, videos on, and so on. And uh, beyond uh, this kind of interactions between the users and items, 
uh, we we can have some side information about uh, about the users and items. For example, for the movie, uh, we can have some side information uh, like uh, the product years or who are the actor and the uh, we will comment. And for the user, uh, we also can have some additional information. For example, uh, we can have their profile. And in some case, like in Facebook or LinkedIn, we can have uh, this kind of uh, social uh, relations to indicate the relationships among users. Uh, for example, uh, from this example, uh, we can see for a typical recommend systems, the input to this system uh, typically is, uh, is the his historical user item interactions. And of course, if the site information is available, uh, we can also put this site information into the system to help solve some specific problem. Maybe this problem cannot be solved by using uh, the user item interaction only. And actually this site information can further help enhance the recommendation performance. So uh, what we want to do in recommender systems, uh, we want to predict how likely a user uh, will interact with a, a target item. Of course, uh, in different scenarios, the interactions uh, can be defined differently. For example, uh, in e-commerce, uh, probably uh, we want to predict uh, whether this user is interested in items or whether this user uh, will click the item or weigh this item, even buy these items, right? So in different scenarios, uh, we can have different definitions about uh, interaction. But the overall goal for recommender systems is try to predict more potential interactions. Okay, so uh, one popular technique to achieve the goal is our collaborative filtering. Basically, the basic assumption of collaborative filtering is uh, similar users will have similar preferences. So that's why we usually use their his historical data to get similar users. And then in the future, we can use this kind of similarity or similar users uh, to make predictions. And one typical way to, uh, to, to, to do it is how can we encode their preferences and learn their representations? And then uh, uh, once we get their representations, we can calculate their similarity or we can do some other scoring function, right? And so here, uh, we still use this movie example to illustrate. Basically, uh, this uh, user item his historical interactions, uh, we can uh, represent this as the user item rating matrix R. Here in this matrix, uh, we have a lot of missing value. Actually, uh, this matrix is quite spot and a lot of entities are unknown. So uh, the task here, uh, we, what we want to do is we can learn representations of items and users based on this observed uh, entities in this matrix. So uh, once we learn these representations, uh, we can make a further prediction. Okay. Uh, so uh, we can see, as we mentioned, uh, for collaborative filtering or other uh, recommendation techniques, the learning uh, representations is the key for, the, for their success. So uh, when we mention uh, the representation learning, uh, probably uh, the first technique in your mind is deep learning, right? So indeed, uh, we are now in the areas of deep learning because of their uh, promising performance. So uh, for example, uh, here we showed is in some area, deep learning uh, can achieve better performance than our human, especially in 
a specific data set and in typical tasks, right? And of course, uh, we can also have another uh, popular examples or popular area, uh, like the in, in speech uh, recognition or the natural language processing in such kind of area. So here, probably you have the questions, can we extend the success of deep learning into recommend the system? The answer is yes. So that's why uh, recently uh, we can see a lot of uh, research paper uh, proposed in, in academia. Also, there are some uh, deep, uh, deep learning techniques are applied into industry. So uh, driven by this uh, recent advance in deep learning, there has been increasing interest in developing deep learning based recommender systems. In general, uh, the architecture of deep recommender systems mainly consists of these following key components. So uh, the first component here is the uh, data input layer. Here, we aim to select uh, a subset of relevant features for building recommendation models, including probably uh, the, especially the user item interactions, right? If the site information available, uh, then we can include the user profile and the items attributes. And in the embedding components, most recommendation models uh, first trans transform the role user and item features into one hot letters and then embed them as, as dense representations via the feature embedding layer. Next step is the important step is the interaction components, which perform the nonlinear feature interactions so as to learn high order feature interactions as well as to learn the nonlinear relations between the users and items. And for the whole model, we also need to consider other factors about the proposed frameworks and about the training uh, uh, procedures from the perspective of the system design. Here comes a question. And can this, this uh, deep recommend architecture be generalized to all kinds of data or different uh, recommendation problems? I believe the answer is no. In this, in this uh, kind of uh, general architecture and at each component, uh, we may have different uh, designs and operators. So to build a recommender systems with specific data or the particular uh, problem, the more common practice is to design and trim different components in a hand crafty way. For example, we need to have to trim the embedding side in the embedding components, right? And also it's that our human experiment or the expert domain knowledge are needed to select the uh, suitable interaction operators from the inner products or the outer product or the convolutions, et cetera. So what I mean is, although the recommender systems show their promising results, they still suffer from a manual design issue. For, uh, here, for example, first, uh, they have any, sorry, uh, can we use some guy? Okay, sorry. Um, so what are the results of our work so far? Um, we started with- Sorry, uh, who can help us? Um, Mills, uh, our audience, Get some noise. Okay, uh, I, I can continue. So first, they have the required expert domain knowledge in uh, deep, uh, deep learning or the recommender systems. And second, the engineering effort and the time cost are required to uh, decide the task specific uh, components for different recommendation problem. So uh, the, the human, uh, our human uh, bias or the error can easily result in suboptimal uh, recommendation architecture. So uh, to address the issue uh, we mentioned before, 
in recent years, the, uh, the automatic machine learning, AutoML, as one of the most uh, promising AI techniques, have so its great capabilities uh, to advance our de architectural design from the manual to automatic. So that's why uh, recently we also uh, can see a lot of algorithm and architecture are proposed to apply the auto, auto auto ML technique into the deep recommender systems. So that is also the focus of our today's tutorial. So by incorporating the auto ML into the deep uh, recommender systems and different models can be automatically designed according to different data or the different problem setting. And then to improve the predictions or predictions of the recommender systems also enhance the generalization. Uh, besides, it's also helpful to reduce the, the, the negative influence from our human bias or the errors and significantly uh, reduce artificial and time costs. Okay, uh, here is a brief agenda for the following tutorial. In the following tutorial, uh, we will first uh, discuss about pre preliminary uh, of the auto ML technique. Uh, this part uh, it will be given by Xiang Yu Zhao. Then Bo Chen will discuss about the embedding and interaction component. After that, the Ye Jing Wang, uh, Ye Jing Wang will introduce a comprehensive search and the system. And thus our Xiang Yu Zhao will conclude this tutorial along with some uh, future directions. Okay, uh, here is another thing is here is our very comprehensive com uh, survey paper. It will give you a very comprehensive understanding on this to on this topic. So, uh, so that is a brief introduction about our tutorial. Also, uh, the topic we will cover during this tutorial. Now I will end my part and will hand over this tutorial to Xiang Yu. Xiang Yu. Okay, thank you, Wenqi. Thanks for the introduction. Let me share the screen. Okay, can you see my screen now? Yes. Uh, okay, uh, hello everyone. I'm Xiang Yu Zhao from the School of Data Science at the City University of Hong Kong. Uh, in this part, we will introduce the preliminary of automatic machine learning and uh, neural architecture search. So I think uh, one of the reasons why you are listening to this tutorial is somehow you believe in the success of AI. So in recent years, there are many very successful AI applications in all the kind of fields, like chemistry, medicine, uh, intelligence production, recommendations, and uh, many, many more even in arts, right? And uh, so there are many AI applications and uh, more and more people will work in AI. So uh, I think some of you already have experience in developing AI applications. So you may know that in these days, uh, if we are talking about AI, uh, it means somehow machine learning or even deep learning. And of course, that's only one. So if you, uh, you would like to apply machine learning to new task, you need to consider the following things. First of all, uh, you need to define your task based on your domain knowledge. And uh, secondly, you need your data. So uh, you need to sit there and try to collect the uh, data set from many sources. Uh, but what I'm most interested today is the third part, which is the uh, machine learning and how do we process our data and the way that we get a prediction. Uh, so we can then define the machine learning pipeline. The machine learning pipeline usually consists of data cleaning, feature engineering, model training, and then maybe even some kind of post-processing. So actually all of these components, uh, we have different kind of algorithms and uh, these algorithms maybe even have some uh, hyperparameters uh, you have to deal with. 
and then only the best combination of all of them can lead to the best performance and you can deploy it in the commercial system. So actually this is quite difficult, right? So you need uh, some kind of experts being knowledgeable in all kinds of these parts, trying to figure out what's the best combination. But uh, un uh, unfortunately, the task to figure out the best combination is very tedious and uh, very time consuming. So people have to sit there for maybe for weeks, for months, and even longer to figure it out. So that's the reason why our goals, we aim to support developers and uh, automating the, this part. Okay, uh, so what we are trying to build is an automatic method, uh, which simply prepares the machine learning pipelines giving your data. And the overall mission of AutoML is to enable users to efficiently apply machine learning for the new AI task and the new data size. Uh, then if, if we use AutoML, we can automatically make this system design decisions. But uh, in particular, if, if we go into the direction of deep learning, what we need to talk about is the architecture of the deep neural network like how many layers, how many urines, what kind of operations, and what kind of connections between the operations. So you now have a lot of decision design, design decision again, and uh, this is really depends on your deep neural network, uh, whether it's performed well or not. Uh, so actually the problem of neural architecture search or NAS is to find the neural architecture A, uh, such that the deep learning works, uh, deep learning methods, they works best for the given data. And uh, it is measured by the validation error of this architecture when you train the width for that architecture. And uh, I will call this, I call this width as W star of A. Uh, then this is the formal problem definition and we are trying to minimize the validation loss uh, of the architecture, uh, which is uh, uh, with the optimized parameter W star. And uh, here the optimized parameters means that we uh, trying to, we try to uh, optimize the training loss uh, with something like SGD for this particular architecture. So here we call the upper, for, for upper formula as the outer level problem or the architectural problem. And we call the lower formula as the inner level, which is to optimize the width of the neural network. So you can think this is a bi-level optimization problem. And this paper, Neural Architecture Search with Reinfant Learning, uh, was published by Eclair by Zofa and Li. And uh, since then, uh, this problem, neural architecture search, hit the mainstream and uh, we have seen ex uh, exponential growth of the number of NAS papers published every year. Uh, okay, next uh, we will talk about the major components of NAS. Typically, uh, NAS is a system with three major components. The first one is the search space. So search space defines a set of operations such as convolutions, pooling, or MLP, and uh, how to connect uh, these cooperations to form a valid network, network architecture. So the design of uh, search space usually involves human expertise. So this process will also introduce some human bias. The second one is the search strategy. A search strategy will sample a set of network architecture candidates, or we usually call them as the child, uh, child model. And uh, it receives the child model performance metrics as a reward, such as uh, high accuracy or low latency. And uh, it's optimized to generate the high performance child, uh, child models. And the third one is the evaluation strategy. 
So here we need to estimate or predict the performance of a large number of um, proposed child models uh, in order to obtain the feedback for the search algorithms to learn. And uh, conventionally, uh, this was often done by training a network from scratch, uh, but its process could be very expensive. So that's many new methods has been proposed to save time or computational resources, such as weight sharing or one-shot models. Uh, this we, we will introduce later. Okay. Uh, then I will introduce the techniques of the searching algorithms. And as I mentioned, the first paper that makes the NAS problem popular is uh, this paper, Neuro, uh, Neural Architecture Search with Reinforced Learning. And uh, what was really great is that for the first time, uh, this paper actually yielded a state-of-art result for the real-world benchmark such as C14 or Pantry Bank. And uh, another thing that got, off uh, got a lot of attention is that uh, they said that uh, it also took a lot of computational resources. And uh, they actually used uh, 800 GPUs for three to four weeks. And uh, in total, they trained the 12K and uh, 800 architectures. So this shows that if you have a very large computational power, uh, you can find the better neural architectures than human designers. So uh, how do they use reinforcement learning for this? Uh, they have a controller, uh, which is a, a recurrent neural network. And uh, this has a probabilistic output. So you could sample the architecture from this with a certain probability. Certain probability. And then you can train this child network, uh, child network with the sampled architecture to get an accuracy as a reward. And then you can uh, compute the gradient of these probabilities and uh, scale it by this reward to update the controller. So let me talk more in details uh, so about this uh, reinforcement learning approach. So here uh, is the hyperparameters of the CNN neural network, uh, a convolutional neural network, such as the filter height, filter width, and the number of filters. And uh, these filters uh, were represented as a screen, as a string in the RN controller. And uh, all of the CNN layers have this type of hyperparameters. So if you have a new CNN layers, then you need to sample this type of hyperparameters again. And as I said, when we update the width of the controller by reinforcement learning, uh, which is the approximate, uh, approximate gradient scaled by the reward. So this is a reinforcement learning method. Okay, uh, another NASA approach is actually uh, just the hyperparameter optimization. Because in the end, all you care about is that you have the values of the number of filters, filter height, filter width, and so on. So you could directly work in this space. So in this DBPR paper, uh, in fact, they came up, uh, came up with two seals, and each of them had 25 decisions. So you could just use a single space of 50 categorical hyperparameters and uh, use uh, this to direct, uh, uh, directly uh, optimize by the hyperparameter optimization techniques. So here is a one-to-one -one correspondence between the neural network search and the hyperparameter optimization. Uh, and another approach that was used for, uh, used for NAS is the neural evolution. Uh, in fact, since 1990s, this was typically used for search for both the architecture and the width of the neural networks. And more recently, this ICML paper, uh, they just used SGD for training the neural networks and only used the evolution in order to search over the uh, network architectures. And here you can see a figure where you can see that uh, in the beginning, uh, you actually have a very simple architecture. 
and uh, over time um, you discover more complex architectures and actually their performance uh, is very real in the end. Okay. Uh, okay, so the reinforcement learning and the evolution search method are actually black box methods. And uh, typically the black box methods need a lot of computations to find the best archi uh, neural architectures. Uh, for example, on the CIFAR-10, reinforcement learning and the evolution need at least uh, 2000 GPU days to find the best neural architectures. So next, uh, I will talk about the speed up techniques for NAS. And uh, there will be four type of techniques here. And today I will introduce the first two due to the limited time. And the, the first one is the uh, wheat inheritance and the network uh, morphism. Okay, so the network morphism are the operators that change the network architectures, but not the model functions. So that means that for every input, after you apply the network morphism, the network yields the same output as before. Uh, for example, you have this pre-trained pre network and uh, you put in a layer and then your network become this one. And uh, we say that this, this layer is just an identity mapping. So then the output from this modified architecture will, is still the same as before, right? Because this is an identity mapping. And uh, you can use this network morphism in NAS as the operators to generate the new network. And you don't need to train from scratch because you have a pre-trained network available and you can just uh, fine -tune, fine -tune it, okay? So this allow us to begin with some models uh, that have a certain performance and uh, we can do the fast architecture search. Uh, the second speed up method that I want to talk about is weight sharing and one-shot model. The most popular approach in this domain is the DART algorithm. Uh, that, uh, this DART stands for the differentiable architecture search by Liu et al. at uh, Eclair 2019. So its pipeline is shown in this, in this figure. And uh, you have this discrete architecture search problem where you have uh, operations on the edge and uh, you want to choose between the different uh, operations for each of these edges. And in particular, in this figure, you have the red operation, the green operation, and the blue one. For example, uh, three by three kernels, five, 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 five by five kernel, max pooling, and so on. Uh, and then the DART method uh, relax this discrete NAS uh, problem where you can only choose one thing. And now you can use all the different operations between these edges, and uh, we put a width on them. So this is a mixed operator between node I and node G, and it's just a weighted sum of the individual operations and the weights are these alphas. And here the alphas are called the architectural problem, uh, architectural parameters. Uh, and then uh, you can actually use gradient descent methods uh, to optimize these alphas because the alpha is a continuous value. And you solve this bi-level optimization problem and you look for the alpha that give you the minimal validation loss. Okay, so this is a typical pipeline for the search stage where you go from here to, to here. And some of the edges become stronger and some of them become weaker. And the last step in DART is to discretize, uh, uh, discretize uh, this, uh, each of the, the edges again. So uh, in this figure, only the strongest edges remain and the weaker edges just go away. And then you can have a single architecture again, not this weighted sum manner. Okay, uh, that's the DART approach. 
And uh, this model is very popular because uh, you can actually solve this bad level optimization problem uh, by just doing a gradient step on the alphas and uh, followed by a gradient step on the Vs and a gradient step on the alphas and uh, on the Vs again and again. So this is a very, very simple algorithm and uh, there is no proof of convergency or anything, uh, but uh, it actually works very well in practice to find the best uh, architecture. And also because it's uh, simplicity and the fast speed, most uh, auto ML for recommendation models use this method. Okay, uh, next our tutorial, uh, our tutor uh, Chen Bo will introduce how to use auto ML to find the best embedding dimension and the feature interaction. And uh, Ye Jing Wang will introduce how to conduct a comprehensive search of the recommended system by auto ML. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Professor Zhao. Uh, let me show the slides. Okay, can you see my slides? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. It's okay. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Bo Chen from Huawei Northside Lab. In this part, I will present some AutoML based solution for the embedding component. Different from the computer vision, the input feature used in, in the recommender systems are very sparse and high dimensional. To solve this problem, neural network based model leverage a feature embedding layer to map the high dimensional feature into a low dimensional latent space. For a feature field, we assign each feature with a dense embedding vector and then save all the vector in, in the embedding table. The embedding layer is an important component for the recommender systems as the number of parameters is concentrated in the embedding table. The feature embedding layer not only directly affects the storage capacity and the inference efficiency, but also has a very important effect on the prediction accuracy. To improve the prediction accuracy, save the storage space, and then reduce the model size, AutoML-based solutions are proposed for the learning of feature embedding. The intuition behind is that assigning the higher uh, assigning high dimensional embedding for the high frequency features can improve the model capacity. Besides, the low dimensional embedding for the low frequency features contributes to preventing the overfitting. According to whether or not the optimal embedding size is searched for each feature value, this solution can be divided into two categories, single embedding search and the group embedding search. The first one is the single embedding search, which aim to search the optimal embedding dimension for each feature value. Therefore, this method will face huge search space due, due to the large vocabulary size. To select suitable embedding dimension for different feature values, AMTL adds a mask layer on top of the, on top of the embedding layer. This mass layer can learn a mass vector to drop the undesired dimension of the embedding vector for each feature value. To avoid the unbalanced parameter update due to the different feature frequencies, MTL proposes a twin based architecture. The architecture has two branches, which are used for high frequency and low frequency feature. A weighty sound operation based on the feature frequency is used to merge the result of the two branch. To obtain a hard, ma hard mask layer while making the learning process differentiable, a, som a SOMAX uh, function with a temperature hyperparameter is used to relax into the uh, continuous space. Similarly, PEP proposed a pooling-based solution by enforcing column-wise sparsity on the embedding table with the L0 normalization. Therefore, some elements are set to zero so that the embedding size can be reduced. For example, as shown in the figure, 
the first value in the embedding V1 is set to zero and proof. Therefore, the embedding size of this feature can be reduced. And some unimportant feature embedding like V3 are dropped by all, setting all the values to zero. However, as L0 normalization is NP-hard, PEP takes a soft threshold real parameterization to achieve the similar purpose. GS uh, serve as a learnable pruning threshold with a softmax function. When the observed root value of the embedding parameters are lower than the threshold, PEP will prove this value and then set them to uh, zero. It is obvious that the search space of AMTL and PEP are highly related with the embedding size D. To reduce the search space, a solution is to divide the embedding dimension into several column-wise subdimensions, just like auto-embedding and ESAPN. By doing this, the search space is no longer related to the embedding size, but to the number of predefined subdimensions. Auto-embedding and ESAPN reduce the search space by dividing the embedding dimension into several candidate subdimensions. Shaking the search space can bear with the AMTL and PEP. They share a similar motivation to search different embedding sites for different user and items. They claim that the low frequency user or item may achieve better performance when assigned a smaller embedding size. On the contrary, high frequency user or item may need larger embedding size since it can provide more parameters and achieve better capacity. Therefore, searching embedding size for different user and items dynamically can receive better performance and is more efficient in memory. Auto embedding leverage to control the network to decide the, dis the, to decide the embedding size for each user and item and then perform a soft selection strategy by summing over the candidate subdimensions with the learnable weights. Specifically, auto-embedding first defined uh, several candidate embedding subdimensions and then perform embedding lookup to obtain multiple embeddings. Then to transform various embedding dimension into the same dimension, a linear transform layer is used to unify uh, a linear tra transform layer is performed uh, to transform the uh, various embedding dimension into the same dimension. Then a batch normalization with the 10H function is used to unify the scales. The control network used the feature popularity and the context information, such as the hyperparameter and the loss as the input for the MLP and then output the selection weights. Finally, the weights produced by the uh, control networks are leveraged to aggregate these representations. The optimization is achieved by a bilevel procedure where the controller parameters are optimized on, upon the validation data set while the model parameters are learned on the training data set. Instead, ESAPN performs a hard selection strategy through the policy network or the reinforced learning. Similar as auto-embedding, firstly, each feature obtains multiple embeddings through candidate subdimensions and then pass over the linear transformation uh, layers, batch normalization layers with the 10H function uh, to obtain the comparable scales. Then, uh, to parsing networks serve as RL agents for the user and items, which adjust the embedding size dyna dynamically. The parsing network takes the feature frequencies and the current embedding size as, in, as the input, and then le leverage a MLP uh, to predict the prob probability of choosing to action, namely enlarge the embedding size or unchange the embedding size based on the reward returned from the recommender model. Finally, each user and item converts to an optimal predefined embedding dimensions. 
The second one is the group embedding search, which search the optimal embedding search, uh, optimal embedding size for a group of uh, feature values rather than uh, a single embedding, uh, rather than a single feature value. Auto embedding and ESAPN check the search space by dividing the embedding dimension into several candidate column-wise sub-dimensions. Another solution is to group the feature value of a field based on some indicator, uh, such as the frequency, and then assign a low-wise group embedding dimension for all the values within the group. By doing this, the search space is no longer related to the number of feature values, but to the number of predefined feature groups. A specific case is setting the number of groups as one, and then uh, searching a global embedding dimension for all the feature values of the field, such as auto dim. Auto dim is decided to select optimal embedding dimension dimensions to different feature field in a data driven manner. Auto dim is a two stage framework. The uh, the first stage aims to find the optimal embedding dimensions for each feature field, and the parameter retraining stage uh, selects the embedding dimension and then retrains the parameters. During the first stage, a set of candidate embedding with different dimension is attained. Then, in order to keep the output dimension unchanged, similar as auto embedding and ESAPN, a transform layer is proposed to map the embedding into a same dimension. After that, we obtain the formal embedding for each value uh, by computing the weighting sum of, of all their transform embeddings. Then these formal embeddings are concatenated and fed into the MLP component. The architecture weights over the unified embedding are obtained upon the validation set while the other's model parameters are learned on the training data set. As for the, the, as for the dimension selection, to make the whole framework end-to-end -end differentiable, auto dim search the dimension in a soft and continuous function via the gumball soft max. During the parameter retraining stage, the optimal embedding with the largest weight is selected for each feature field and then retrain the parameter to obtain the final model. In order to balance the search efficiency and uh, performance, some work split the feature value into multi-groups based on the feature frequencies or the clustering, such as the NIMS and the DNIMS. At first, uh, DNIMS use a feature broken stage to reduce the search space and then group the feature into multiple blocks where the feature in a block share the same dimension. Then uh, DNIPS introduce a soft selection layer between the embedding layer and the feature interaction layer to identify the importance of, in, of each uh, dimension in the feature embedding. To relax the search space to be continuous during the search stage, a gradient-based bilevel optimization procedure is proposed. After the optimization, the non-information, uh, the, the non-informative embedding dimension will be proved with a predefined threshold. NIMS also claims that uh, for some hard features, they have more data and information. Therefore, using a large embedding is reasonable. Instead, for some tail features with less data, a small embedding size is enough. To further reduce the search space, NIMS divides the search space from both uh, row-wise and uh, column-wise perspective. NIMS decide single-side embedding search and uh, multi-side embedding search, and then use a IR-based solution to find the optimal embedding dimensions. Specifically, the original embedding matrix is split into multiple embedding blocks. Then a controller learns to sample embedding dimension. For the single-side embedding pattern, 
the controller sample one pair from the search space, while for the multi-site embedding pattern, the controller make a sequence of choices. Finally, the selected embedding block will be concatenated uh, to form the final embedding matrix. The controller is trained with the reward calculated from the main model over the validation data set, which takes both the optimization objective and the training cost into consideration. The above mentions what are decided uh, for the categorical features. Besides, automail based methods are also used for the numerical feature representation. A typical model is AutoDIS, which is an automatic uh, embedding learning framework for the numerical features. Existing representation approaches have some limitations. The first category used the original or the transformation directory without learning embedding, resulting in the low capacity and the poor compatibility. The second one share a single unified field embedding for all the numerical feature in the same field, which is also low capacity. The most popular method is discretization, which transfer the numerical feature to the categorical feature by some predefined rules or models. However, this hard discretization mechanism is two-phase and may cause the SBD and DBS problem. Auto this uh, to overcome these limitations, AutoDIS is proposed, which is consists of three core modules, meta embedding, automatic discretization, and the aggregation function. Specifically, AutoDIS decides a set of meta embeddings for each numerical field, which are shared among all the features. Then this uh, meta embedding can learn global knowledge from the perspective of each field. Then a differentiable automatic mechanism is, uh, is leveraged to perform the soft discretization and then capture the correlation between each uh, numerical feature and the meta embeddings. Finally, an aggregation function is performed to learn the unique representations. Here is the combination of, uh, of the different methods for the categorical feature embedding search, a uh, single embedding search method aim to search optimal embedding dimension for each feature value. Therefore, this method will face a huge search space. Another research routine is to group the feature value of a field based on some indicator such as the frequency, and then assign a low-wise group embedding dimension for all the values within the group. These methods belongs to the group embedding search. As for the search strategy, includes a gradient-based, reinforced learning-based, and a regularization-based solution, where gradient-based is more popular. Then in this part, uh, we will present some AutoML-based research for the interaction component in the deep recommender systems. Effectiveness modeling feature interaction is important for the recommender systems. Both low order and high order feature interaction play important roles to model the user preference. For example, uh, the interaction behaviors be between the APP category and the time step is an important signal for the food, food delivery APP. Besides some high order interaction, such as the three order interaction between uh, among the APP category, user and gender and the age are very important for some video games. However, these interaction signals are hidden in the data and is difficult to identify. Therefore, the change of modeling feature interaction are three folds. Firstly, enumerating all the feature interaction needs large memory and computational uh, cost. For some industry data set with hundreds of feature fields, which has a lot of feature interactions. Besides, it is difficult to be extended into a high order interaction and may contain many useless noisy interactions. Secondly, uh, using human effort 
to identify the important feature interaction is time consuming and requires high level cost. Besides, this human picking method may miss some counterintuitive but very important interactions. Finally, the interaction function needs expert knowledge to decide, such as the inner product, outer product, and so on. Moreover, the interaction function are kept same for all the feature interactions, which is suboptimal for the recommender systems. Therefore, uh, selecting important feature interaction with suitable interaction function is very important. Depending on the search space, the existing methods can be categorized into three groups, uh, feature interaction search, interaction function search, and the interaction block search. Uh, feature interaction search aim to search the beneficial feature interactions. Based on this, interaction function search uh, further search suitable in interaction functions for different uh, feature interaction pairs. The last one is the interaction block search which takes the original feature as a whole and search the optimal uh, network with predefined operations. The first one is the feature interaction search, which search the beneficial feature interactions and drop some noisy interaction signals. Uh, Autofix is the first work for the automatic feature interaction search. The major motivation is that uh, not all the feature interactions are useful, and some noisy interaction signals need to be identified and filtered. Autofix is consists of two stages. The search stage is decided to detect useful feature interaction, while the retrain stage retrains the final model with the selected feature interaction from the uh, former stage. During the stage, uh, during the first stage, uh, autofix enumerate all the feature interactions and introduce a set of gates to indicate the importance of each interaction. To make such process di differentiable, autofix relax the search space to be continuous by defining arch architecture parameters alpha. Since the feature interactions are jointly learned with the architecture parameters, the coupling of that scale will lead to the unstable estimation. To avoid this problem, autofix use the batch normalization to ease the scale issues. Besides, the GRDA optimizer is leveraged to obtain a stable and sparse architecture parameters. Therefore, in the retrain stage, uh, some architecture parameters with small values will be abandoned which means that uh, cutting some unimportant feature interaction. Finally, the model will be retrained to fine tune the, the model's parameters. However, the limitation of autofix is obvious. When searching high order feature interaction, the search space of autofix is, is very huge. Therefore, the search efficiency is low. To solve the efficiency and accuracy dilemma, Auto Group proposed an automatic feature grouping solution and reduced the search space significantly. During the feature grouping stage, each feature is possible to be selected into a feature set of each order. In the feature grouping stage, the selection of useful feature interaction at a given order is treated as a structural optimization problem. Specifically, architecture parameters are introduced to indicate whether the feature is selected into feature set at a given order. Then, to make the selection differentiable, auto group relax the binary choice of a feature being selected by a feature set to a sole max over two possibilities. The search space is further relaxed into continuous and the optimization is approximated by introducing the gamble somax trick. With the gamble somax, the process of grouping feature into different, uh, di different feature set is trainable via the back propagations. 
During the interaction stage, the representation of feature set is defined via the fondo weighty sum with the learnable uh, network weights W. Then, inspired by the FN, the P order interaction is given below. By doing this, the time complexity of the high order interaction can be reduced. In summary, auto group use the gumball somax to group the features into high order interaction and then present a high order interaction calculation form however although auto group solve the efficiency and accuracy dilemma through the feature grouping it also ignores the order uh, ignores the order priority property the order priority property means that the higher order, the higher order feature interaction quality can be relevant to that degenerated low order ones, which is a very important property for the high order interaction modeling. Therefore, uh, FIS provides another solution. It regards the uh, it regard the original feature as a feature graph and then model the high order feature interaction by the multi-layer convolution of the GN so that the huge search space can be reduced. Besides, to keep the order priority property, uh, FIS make the adjacency matrix of each layer depend on the previous layer. To be specific, FIS defines an adjacency tensor to indicate the feature interaction at each order. With an adjacency tensor, the dedicated group, uh, graph convolutional operator produce the node representation layer by layer. For example, uh, for the K order, the node representations can be aggregated by the K minus one order and the zero order. Therefore, the node representation at the K layer corresponds to the generating K plus one order interactive features. From the perspective of feature graph, the task of generating interactive features can be further formulated as a bi-level bi optimization problem. To make the optimization more efficient, FIVES uh, use a sub-adjacency tensor for propagation at the K layer. When the calculation still, uh, still depends on a, a binarized adjacency tensor. Finally, after the optimization, the beneficial feature interactions can be derived with the well-learned adjacency tensor layer by layer. Besides, the, uh, besides searching beneficial feature interactions, searching optimal interaction function for each feature interaction pairs contributes to better capturing the informative inter interaction signals. Uh, Calibrating filtering is a very important topic for the recommender systems, which use the inner product between the user and item embedding vectors for prediction. However, besides the inner product, there are many human desired operations such as plus, minus, uh, max, concat, auto product, and so on, which are very uh, which are also used in various uh, recommender tasks. Is that an absolute best interaction functions? The answer is not for the research SIL. The optimal interaction function depends on the task and the data set. SIF is designed for selecting different interaction functions across different data sets. It automatically derives a suitable interaction function for the CF task which consists of micro search space referring to element-wise MLP and the macro search space, including several predefined operations. SIF uh, first search for a nonlinear transform on each single element, and then combine this element-wise operation on the vector level with different operations. A bilevel gradient-based search algorithm is then leveraged to relax the choices among operation in a continuous space. Finally, a specific network can be developed for the different data set. 
auto feature extend the interaction function search to the multi field, uh, multi field high, high order scenarios. The motivation for the auto feature, uh, the motivation for the auto feature is twofold. Uh, not all the feature interaction between each pair of fields need to be modeled, and not all the useful feature interactions can be modeled by the same interaction functions. Therefore, auto feature uh, utilize several micro uh, networks with different architectures to model these feature interactions. The search process is achieved by an evolutional uh, algorithm with the naive base trait. Firstly, auto feature uh, chain a naive base trait to classify different network architectures according to the prediction accuracy where the tree tends to classify the most well-performed network into the leftmost uh, leaf space, uh, such that the next generation can be, most, uh, can be more efficient. Then sample leaf nodes from this uh, space uh, based on the Chinese restaurant process. The top two samples with the highest accuracy will be picky to perform a crossover and several mutations. Then the result architectures will be checking whether it belongs to the desired uh, space. The whole search procedure continues until the desired accuracy is achieved or the maximum number of steps is reached. Searching appropriate interaction function for different feature interaction may bring a uh, huge search space and hide overhead. Therefore, one straightforward idea is to title original feature as a whole and search the optimal network with predefined operations, which belongs to the interaction block search. Auto CTR is one of the uh, representative work for this kind, which decide a hierarchical search space by abstracting the low features and operations such as MLP, FN, and the dot product into the virtual blocks. Then these blocks are further connected as a graph, both the uh, block hyperparameter and the connection among blocks are to be searched. Similar as the auto feature, auto CTR utilizes a multi-objective evolutional algorithm with the architecture level learning to rank uh, guidance to search the optimal architectures. Firstly, uh, several architectures are random sample and then evaluate. Then a multi-objective survival selection process is designed and several metrics such as the model fitness, uh, age, complexity are taken into consideration. Therefore, a few top performance architectures are selected as the population for the parent selection. After getting the population, the next step is the parent selection. The goal of parent selection is to select an architecture from the population for generating a good performance of screens. To balance the selection intensity and the diversity, Auto CTR designs a nonlinear ranking distribution and proposes a rank ranking based parent selection process. Finally, a parent architecture will be sample in this process. Then a mutation process is used to generate the neighbors. A learning to rank strategy is used to learn the related ranking amount architectures based on a pairwise ranking loss and the gradient boost of trait learner. Finally, the best neighbor as the offspring will be added into the population. And this uh, search procedure continues until the desired architecture is sample or the maximum number of steps is reached. To further improve computational efficiency, AutoPI utilizes a gradient-based search strategy for exploration in a more efficient search space. AutoPI decides a hierarchical search space with block connecting to a graph where the interaction cell formulates the high-order interactions, while the, while the uh, ensemble cells 
uh, formulate the example of the low order and the high order interactions. Then the gradient-based search strategy is adopted in the auto PI for, for the efficiency. Auto PI first introduced the architecture parameter for continuous reduction on the search space. By doing this, the architecture can be optimized by the gradient-based gradient methods. A, bi a bilabel algorithm is used to learn the architecture parameters and the ways of operations. The architecture parameters are optimized upon the validation set, while the model's parameters are learned on the training data sets. Here is the comparison of the different methods. In summary, depending on the search space, existing methods for automatic feature interaction component can be categorized into three groups, uh, feature interaction search, interaction function search, and the interaction block search. Feature interaction search aim to search the beneficial feature interaction. Based on this, interaction function search uh, further search the suitable uh, interaction function for the different feature interaction pairs. The last uh, method is interaction block search, which takes the original feature as a whole and search the optimal networks with predefined operations. As for the search strategy, including the uh, gradient-based methods and the evolutionary-based solutions, where gradient-based uh, methods is still more important. The next part is comprehensive search and the system design. Uh, Ye Jing Wang will present this part. Uh, thank you. Okay, thanks, Mr. Borchen. Let me share my screen. Can you see my slides now? Yes. Okay. This is Ye Jing Wang from City University of Hong Kong. Mr. Bolton has introduced an automated machine learning method searching for the optimal embedding components and the future interaction components. I will continue to introduce some latest works about comprehensive search and the system design. Comprehensive search means the approach searches for several parts at the same time. For example, if a framework searches for both the embedding size and the interaction function, then it is a comprehensive search. And the system design search means an approach applied to achieve the optimal architecture besides the aforementioned components. For example, the loss function is also an important part for model performance. Approaches search for the optimal loss function to help us to design more effective deep recommend systems. This kind of works could be regarded as system design search. Here is a table including all papers in my talk. I will introduce three works for comprehensive search and the three works for system design. More related work, uh, more related papers could be found in our survey. I first introduce works for comprehensive search. The first work is AMEIR. Also suggests that deep recommendation models could be divided into three parts. Behavior modeling for sequential futures, future interaction for non-sequential futures, and the future interaction, and, uh, and the multi-layer perception for model inference. Plus, existing deep recommender systems are hard to shoot all scenarios and the search space of previous automated deep recommender systems are restricted. For these reasons, authors propose AMEIR, searching for these three parts to achieve an adaptive model. To be specific, they search for the sequential modeling architecture, future interaction candidates, and the multi-layer perception dimensions. Compared with the deep recommender structures we mentioned before, this work takes sequential futures into account. In this paper, the whole search space correspondingly consists of three subspaces. The first is the subspace for behavior modeling. In this subspace, authors aim to search for L blocks. L is a predefined hyperparameter. The structure of a block is visualized in the right feed. There are three units in each block normalization, layer, oper layer operation, 
and the activation function. The computation of a specific block is listed under the fig. Predefined candidate sets of these units are also listed. For example, we could select a convolutional network or recurrent network as the layer operation. The second search subspace is interaction exploration. In fact, AMEIR fixes the interaction function as hardman product and only search for future interaction candidates. For the third search space, this paper searches for the output dimension of each liner transformation and the following activation function. The output dimension should be smaller than the input dimension. The detailed constraint is formulated. And similar to subspace one, the activation function is selected from another predefined candidate set. The overall strategy of AMEIR is one short random search. AMEIR searches for the, a host recommender system in three steps. The first step is search for behavior modeling blocks for sequential futures. With only sequential futures input, AMEIR evaluates the performance of such an architecture with a predefined multi layer perception. The second step is searching for a future interaction. The strategy of this step is a combination of one-shot random search and a sequential model-based optimization. Specifically, future interaction set is progressively enlarged. Only selected features interaction from the previous order will be candidates for next order interaction. The evaluation is conducted with another predefined multi-layer perception. In the last step, AMEIR allocates a weight matrix with the maximum dimension for each layer and select a submatrix according to the search dimension. The second work I want to introduce is AIM. It is an extended work of autofix. In AIM, also search for three parts of the recommender system, future interaction, future interaction function, and the embedding dimension. AIM utilize gates to control the model architecture. Whether a gate would open or close depends on the contribution of the corresponding architecture to the final performance. In other words, non-predictive future interaction, ineffective future interaction function, and the redundant embedding dimension would be dropped. The process of AIM is visualized on the right. It first searches for the future interaction and the corresponding interaction function, then searches for the optimal embedding site. The framework is optimized by gradient descent. The third work is auto IAS. This framework searches for five components of deep recommender systems, embedding site, projection site, future interaction, interaction function and the multi-layer perception structures. The projection size is a unified dimension for future interaction. Auto IAS generates the optimal architecture based on knowledge distillation together with reinforcement learning. To be specific, different from ordinary parameter sharing strategy, this framework regards the network with the most parameters as a teacher architecture or generated networks as a stu student network. Then auto IAS transfer knowledge from the teacher ne network to the generated architectures, achieving a similar target to the ordinary parameter sharing strategy. The, the architecture generating policy is trained by reinforcement learning. Next, I will introduce three works for system design. First, I want to share auto loss. Most existing deep recommender systems leverage a predefined and a fixed loss function. It leads to a suboptimal recommendation quality and the training efficiency. While some other works exhaustively search or manually set weights and fuse multiple loss functions by weighted sum, they are computational intensive and neglect their risk convergence behavior. 
This work aims to search for appropriate loss function according to the different convergence behavior. Here is the framework of auto loss. I first introduce the forward propagation process. It could be divided into four steps. First, the deep recommendation model makes the prediction. Then we calculate all candidate losses. Subsequently, according to the convergence behavior of data examples, the, co the controller generates weights for each loss. And then finally, we get the weighted sum of, of losses. Then we need to optimize the framework by back, back, back for, um, backward propagation. There are two sets of parameters should be optimized, the controller parameters and the deep recommendation model parameters. Auto loss alternatively updates these parameters. To be specific, the deep recommendation model parameters are updated on training that and with the controller parameters fixed, while the controller parameters are updated on validation sets with the deep recommendation model parameters fixed. This design helps to tackle the overfitting problem. Next, I want to share auto GSR. It is a framework searching for the optimal graph neural network architectures to perform session-based recommendation. Session-based recommendation aims to predict the user preference based on several previous actions. Many works are proposed to convert the sessions to graph and apply graph neural networks for recommendation. Authors suggest that all information in a session graph could be divided into three types, long range dependencies, local context information, and the semantic relation information. Plus, to handle this information, we could use this five kinds of session graph and the corresponding graph network ar architectures. However, existing method only consider a single type of session graph to utilize the advantages of all graph types and capture all information. Authors apply automated machine learning. Specifically, the search space of auto GSI is two level, session aggregation and layer aggregation. On session aggregation level, authors search for the optimal session graph for each layer. The candidates are aforementioned five kinds of graphs. On layer aggregation level, an author search for suitable operation to aggregate the information of each layer. Each layer, the candidates are listed. It is optimized by con continuous selection and the gradient descent. The last work of my talk is auto FT. AutoFT is designed for transfer learning recommend assistance. Automated machine learning techniques are applied to decide whether some parts of a pre-trained model should be frozen in fine tuning. It could help to tackle the overfitting problem. It searches for field-wise and layer-wise parameters. The field-wise parameters are the embedding metrics of each future field while layer-wise parameters are parameters of deep and cross layers for future interaction and prediction. It is also optimized by continuous relaxation and the gradient descent. Next, Dr. Xiang Yuzhao would conclude the tutorial and give some future directions. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Ye Jin. Uh, let me share the screen. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, so this is the last section. And in this section, we will first summarize the tutorial and then provide some potential feature directions. So from previous sections provided by my colleagues, uh, we know that AutoML can improve the performance of deep recommend system in a data-driven manner. And the existing AutoML work mainly focuses on searching the optimal embedding dimensions for the better feature representations. 
and uh, design appropriate uh, deep networks to capture the feature interactions, uh, and also design the comprehensive uh, system architecture for be to better improve the model performance. So by introducing AutoML into the deep recommend system, we can automatically design the different models according to various data. Uh, this can improve the prediction performance and the model generalization. Besides, uh, it's also helpful to elim eliminate the negative inference from human bias and error. And it uh, can also significantly reduce the artificial and the temporal cost. So for the embedding component, the embedding dimension search methods can be divided into two categories, uh, the single embedding search and the group embedding search. Uh, the former single embedding search, uh, they search for the optimal embedding dimension for each feature value. Uh, and the later group embedding search, they first group the feature values and then assign the same embedding dimension for all the feature values within the same group. So therefore the search space of the group embedding search is less than the single embedding search. And besides we found that, uh, we found that the automatic embedding learning for the uh, numerical features are very limited. And as for the search algorithm, gradient descent is more popular because it's fast, it's, uh, it's fast speed. Okay, for the interaction component, the existing work can be grouped into three types. Uh, first, the feature interaction search aim to search uh, beneficial feature interactions uh, automatically. And uh, based on this, the second type, interaction function search, uh, they further search the suitable interaction functions for the different uh, feature pairs. And therefore, these two types of methods have a very large search space uh, with the number of feature field. And the third method is the interaction block search, which takes the origi original features as a, as a whole and uh, group the representat uh, representative uh, operations in several blocks so as to reduce the search space. So the third strategy includes a gradient-based and evolution-based method, where the gradient-based is more popular. And finally, for the comprehensive search, researchers usually design algorithm to search for each, uh, each part separately. And for the system design, we could apply AutoML to many aspects from the loss function to session search and the transfer learning. And uh, for these two kind of works, uh, gradient method is still the most popular search, search algorithm. Okay, so uh, although many efforts has been made to automate the design of deep recommend system, uh, there are still many opportunities for the future directions. Uh, for the feature embeddings, it is potential to combine the auto automatic feature representation with the model compression and uh, quantization. And besides, uh, multimodal features are widely used in the recommend system. And we can also learn their representations by AutoML. Uh, for the feature interaction, most works focus on the global feature interaction search, but the personalized feature interaction search for different users remain unexplored due to the huge search space. And besides, uh, we can introduce a more complex inter interaction functions from CV and NLP to generate more diverse uh, interactions. Uh, for the comprehensive search architecture, uh, existing works usually search for several parts of the deeper recommendation model. Uh, however, there are few works they really search for the multiple component simultaneously. Uh, current work, they just search for each part separately and then combine them for final deep recommendation model. So this might result in the suboptimal recommendation performance. And then for the AutoML algorithm, 
existing works just directly transfer some algorithms widely used in CV and NLP to the deep recommendation models, uh, which may be suboptimal. That uh, it's important to design more suitable search and evaluation methods for the recommendation scenario. Uh, moreover, there are some other potential research directions. The first one is according to different requests, we can adaptively search different sub-models or sub-architectures, uh, which is very beneficial for the industry. Uh, besides, uh, multitask learning that can uh, consider the different uh, revenue target is one of the most important techniques in the industry recommendations. Uh, thus, it's worthy of designing an automatic algorithm for the multitask recommendations. And at last, users' historical behaviors contains different dimensions of their interests. Uh, therefore, we can automatically retrieve the beneficial historical behaviors to better model user preference. Okay, uh, that's all for our tutorial. If you are interested in this topic, please uh, refer to our survey for more details. Uh, thanks for your listening. Any questions? Okay, thanks uh, for Xiang's great uh, in, uh, conclusions. So are there any questions for, for us? So if you have any question, you just uh, raise your hands or type your questions in the chatting box. Thank you. Or of course, uh, if you, uh, you can also email us of nice. Thank you. And our tutorials, nice, nice, uh, already uh, uploaded in our uh, website. So if you are interested, you can download it. Oh, okay. I have one question. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, uh, I noticed that this is a great talk. Uh, uh, most of this work are concentrated in feature interaction of feature learning. Uh, however, in some other components, uh, the heat layer or in of some other layer, I noticed that few of works are, uh, are performed before. I want to know why uh, uh, such a situation, uh, uh, lack of enough concentration in the hidden layer? Uh, this is my question. Okay, uh, thanks for your question. Uh, I think uh, one reason is that uh, typically the recommendations, uh, the difference between from CA and NLP is that uh, uh, in C, uh, CV task, typically they are, uh, how to say, they are the computational uh, uh, oriented methods. So the most uh, uh, most uh, computation is from their neural networks, but uh, for the recommendations, typically uh, recommendations are I/O oriented. So the most uh, time-consuming part, or the most uh, uh, the most uh, predictive part, is their their features, right? So typically, um, one of the most simple way or the most practical way is to uh, capture the one is to directly work on the features, feature embeddings, and then another is to uh, search for the explicit uh, feature interactions. And in industry, we can find that uh, typically these two methods works uh, uh, the most important parts in recommendations. Uh, as for the MLP parts, the hidden layers, in typically we, we can find that uh, 
in industry, we just use probably two fully connected layers, right? And uh, these two layers are shared by all the users or all the items. So that's why probably there are only a few works they, they search for the MLP layers. Oh, okay. Oh, oh okay. Thanks a lot. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other questions? Uh, okay, since we already passed the, the required time, so if no other questions, I will conclude the, the session. Okay, thank you. If you have other questions, or you are interested interested in our research, you can contact us. Thank you.